live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas for Amazon Web Services, AWS reInvent 2019. It's theCUBE's seventh year covering reInvent. Eight years they've been running this event, it gets bigger every year. It's been a great wave to ride on. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. We've been riding this wave, Dave, for years. It's so exciting, it's bigger and more exciting. Lucky this seven. Year, this year, more than ever, so much stuff is happening. It's been really exciting. I think there's a sea change happening in terms of another wave coming. Quantum computing, big news here, and a bunch of other great tech. Our next guest is Bill Vass, VP of Technology, Storage Automation Management part of the quantum announcement that went out. Bill, good to see you. Yeah, welcome to see you. Great to see you again. Thanks for being, for having me on board. So, uh, we love quantum. We talk about it all the time. My son loves it, everyone loves it. It's futuristic. It's going to crack everything. It's going to be the fastest thing in the world. Quantum supremacy. Andy referenced it in my one-on-one -on -one with him around quantum being you know, important yes, for Amazon. It is. It you is. guys launched it. Take us through the timing, why, why now? Okay, so the bracket service, which is based on uh, uh, quantum notation made by Dirac, right? Uh, uh, so we thought that was a good name for it. Uh, it provides to you the ability to do uh, development uh, uh, in, in quantum algorithms using gate-based programming that's available. Uh, and then uh, at, do simulation on classical computers, which is what we call our digital computers today now. Yeah. Uh, these are classical computers. <laughs> it's a classic. All, all of a sudden, right? Uh, and, and then uh, actually do uh, uh, execution of your algorithms on, on today three different quantum computers, one that's annealing and the uh, two big gate-based machines. Uh, and that gives you the ability to test them in parallel and separate from each other. In fact, uh, uh, last week uh, I was working with the team and we had two machines, an ion trap machine and an electromagnetic tunneling machine, uh, solving the same problem and passing variables back and forth from each other. And you could see the CloudWatch metrics coming out and the data was going to an S3 bucket on the output and we do it all in a Jupyter notebook. So it was pretty amazing to see all of that running together. I think it's probably the first time two different machines with two different technologies have worked together on a cloud computer, fully integrated with everything else. So it was pretty you know, exciting. So quantum supremacy has been a word kicked around, a lot of hand waving, yeah, IBM, yeah. Google. Depending on who you talk to, there's different versions, but at the end of the day, quantum is a leap in computing. Yes, it can uh, be. It can be. Yeah. It's still early days. It would be day zero. Yeah, yeah, well I think, I think you think of it, we're about where computers were with tubes, if you remember, if you can go back <laughs> that far, right? Right, it's about, that's about where we are right now. Uh, where you got to kind of jiggle the tubes sometimes to, to, get, to get them A bug gets in there. Yeah, yeah, a bug can get in there and those kind of things. So, you flip them off with a punch yeah, card. Yeah, yeah, so for example, a number of the machines, uh, they run for four hours and then they come down for a half hour for cal calibration and then they run for another four hours. So we're still sort of at that early stage, but you can do useful work on them and, and uh, more mature systems like for example D-Way, which is a kneeler is a little different than gate-based machines, it's really quite mature, right? And, and so uh, I, I think as you go back and forth between these different machines, the gate-based machines and the annealers, uh, you can really get a sense for what's capable today uh, and uh, with Bracket, and that's what we want to do is get people to ac actually be able to try them out. Now, quantum supremacy is a fancy word for we did something you can't do on a, on a classical computer. Right, that that's on a quantum computer for the first time, and quantum computers have the potential to exceed the processing power, especially on things like factoring and other things like that, or Hamiltonian simulations for molecules and those kinds of things, uh, because that's a quantum computer operates the way a molecule operates, right? In a lot of ways, using quantum mechanics and things like that, and and so it's a fancy term for that. Uh, we don't really focus on that at Amazon, we focus on cu solving customers' problems. And the problem we're solving with Bracket is to get them to learn it as it's evolving and be ready for it and continue to develop the environment and then also offer a lot of choice. Amazon's always been big on choice. I mean, if you look uh, uh, at, at our, our processing portfolio, we have uh, uh, AMD, uh, uh, Intel x86, great partners, great products from them. We have NVIDIA, great partner, great products from them. Uh, but we also have our Graviton 1 and Graviton 2, uh, and our, our new uh, 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 GPU type chip. Uh, and, and those are great products too. I've been doing a lot on those as well. And the customer should have that choice. And, and with quantum computing, 
computers are trying to do the same thing. You, we, we will have you know, uh, uh, annealers, we will have uh, uh, ion trap machines, we will have uh, electromagnetic machines, and others available on, on, on bracket. Can I ask you a question on quantum, if you go back a little bit. So you mentioned vacuum tubes, so it's kind of funny. Yeah. And it, but the challenge there, there was, whatever well, was, was cooling and reliability, system yeah, yeah. downtime. What are the technical challenges with regard to quantum in terms of making it stable? Yeah, so, so some of it is, you know, on, on classical computers, as, as, as we call them, uh, uh, they, they have error correction code built in. So you have, uh, whether you, you know it or not, there's alpha particles that are flipping bits on your memory all the time, right? And if you don't have ECC, you'd, you'd get crashes constantly on your machine. Uh, and so we built in ECC. So we're, we're trying to build uh, the quantum computers with the proper error correction, right, uh, to handle these things, because nothing runs perfectly. You just think it's perfect because we're doing all the error correction under the covers, right? And so that needs to evolve on quantum computers. The ability to reproduce them uh, in volume at, from an engineering perspective. Uh, you know, again, uh, standard lithography has a yield rate, right? I mean, sometimes the yield is 40%, sometimes it's 20%, sometimes it's a really good fab and it's 80%. Right, and and so that you have a yield rate as well. So being able to do that, uh, these machines also generally operate in a cryogenic world. That's a little bit more complicated, right? And they're also heavily affected by electromagnetic radiation and things like that. So you have to sort of uh, a Faraday cage them in some cases and other things like that. So, uh, so there's a lot that goes on there. So it's managing. Uh, a physical environment like cryogenics is, is challenging to do well. Uh, having the fabrication to reproduce it in, in a new way is, is, is hard. Uh, the physics is actually, I, 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 I shudder to say well understood. I, I, I would say the, the way the physics reworks is well understood. How it works is not, right? No one really knows how entanglement works. They just know what it does and then that's understood very well, right? And, and so, uh, uh, so a lot of it is now, why we're excited about it, it's an engineering problem to solve and we're pretty good at engineering. So talk about the uh, practicality. Andy Jass, who's on the record with me, quoted, said, quantum is very important to Amazon. Yes, you, it is. You, you agree with that. He also said, it's years out, you said yes. that. He said, but we want to make it practical for we customers. Do. We do. What is the practical thing? Is it just kicking the tires? Is some of the things you mentioned? So, What's the so, core goal? So, so the, the, in my opinion, that we're at a point in the evolution of these quantum machines, and, and, and certainly with the work we're doing with Caltech and others, that uh, uh, the number of available qubits are starting to increase at a, an astronomic rate, you know, the Moore's Law kind of a rate, right? Whether it's, no matter which machine you're looking at out there, and there's about 200 different companies building quantum computers now. Yeah. And, and and so, uh, uh, and, and they're all good technology. They're, they're, they've all got challenges as well as reproducibility and those kinds of things. Uh, and, and so now's a good time to start learning how to do this gate-based programming okay. knowing that it's coming. Because quantum computers, uh, they won't replace a classical computer, so don't don't think that yeah. because they, they, there is no quantum RAM. You can't run 200 petabytes of data through a quantum computer today, and those kinds of things. What it can do is factoring very well, or it, it can do uh, uh, probability uh, equations very well. Uh, it'll have effects on Monte Carlo simulations. It'll have effects specifically in material sciences where you can simulate molecules for the first time that you just can't do on on classical computers. And when I say you can't do on classical computers, my quantum team always corrects me. They're like, well, it, no one has proven that there's an algorithm you can run on a classical computer <laughs> that will do that yet, right? <laughs> uh, so there may be times when you, you say, okay, I did this on a quantum computer and you could only do it on a quantum computer, but then someone's very smart mathematician says, oh, I figured out how to do it on a regular computer. You don't need a quantum computer for that. And that's constantly evolving as well in parallel, right? And, and so, and that's what's that argument about between IBM and, and Google on quantum supremacy is, is that, you know, uh, and, and that's an unfortunate distraction in my opinion. Uh, what Google did was, was quite impressive and, and it, if you're in the quantum world, you should be very, very happy with what they did. Uh, uh, they, they had a very low error rate with a large number of qubits and that's a big deal. Well, I just want to ask you, I mean, it, 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 this industry is an arms race, yeah. but with something like Quantum where you've got 200 companies actually yeah, yeah. investing and it's so early days, 
Is is you know collaboration maybe a, a, a model here? I mean, what well, do you think? You, know, you mentioned is, Caltech. It certainly is for us because we, like I said, we're going to have multiple quantum computers available, just like we collaborate with Intel and AMD and all of our other partners, right, in that space as well. That's the nice thing about being a, a cloud service provider is we can give customers choice and we can have our own innovation plus their innovations available to customers, right? Innovation doesn't just happen in one place, yeah. right? It, it, I, we, we got a lot of smart people at Amazon, we don't invent everything, right? <laughs> so, so, I, so I got to ask you, obviously, the, we could take the cube quantum and call it qubits, um, not to be confused with the cube video highlights. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah joking aside, Classical computers, will there be a classical cloud? Because this is kind of a futuristic. Or you mean a quantum cloud? Quantum yeah, cloud. Yeah, yeah. so they'll well, be. Then you get the classic cloud, you get the quantum cloud. Well, no, they'll be together. So think of a, I, I think a quantum computer will be used like we used to use a math coprocessor. Right, if you like, or FPGAs are used today, right? So you'll, you'll go along and you'll have your problem. And I'll, I'll give you a, a, real, a practical example. So let's say you had a machine with 125 qubits, okay? Uh, you can start doing some really nice optimization algorithms on that. So imagine there's this company that ships stuff around a lot. I wonder who that could be. And they need to optimize continuously their delivery for a truck. Right, uh, and that changes all the time. Well, that algorithm, if you're doing hundreds of deliveries in a, a, a truck, it's very complicated. That traveling salesman algorithm is an MP hard problem when you, when you do it, right? And so, how, what would be the, the fastest, best path? But you got to take into account weather and traffic, so that's changing. So you might have a classical computer, do those algorithms overnight for all the delivery trucks, and then send them out to the trucks, the next morning they're driving around. But it takes a lot of computing power to do that, right? Well, a quantum computer can do that that kind of a, a problemistic or deterministic equation like that, uh, not deterministic, uh, a, a, uh, uh, you know, a best fit algorithm like that much faster. And so you could have it every second up providing that. So your classical computer's sending out the manifest, interacting with the person, it's got the website on it, and then it gets to the part where here's the problem to calculate. It does, we call it a shot when you're on a quantum computer. It runs it in a few seconds that would take an hour or Good more. Job, yeah. And it comes right back yeah. with the result and then it, it continues with its thing, passes that to the driver. You know, another update occurs, you know, and it's just going on all the time. So those, those kinds of things are, are very practical and coming. I got to ask for the uh, younger generations, my son's super interested, yeah. as I mentioned before you came on. Quantum attracts the younger, smart yeah, kids coming yeah. into the workforce. Yeah. Engineering, yeah. talent. What's the best path for someone who's, you know, has an either advanced degree or no degree to get involved in quantum? Is there a certain uh, advice you so, give so, someone? So, so the reality is, um, I mean, obviously having taking quantum mechanics in school and understanding the physics behind it to a certain extent, as much as you can understand the physics behind it, right? Uh, I think the uh, uh, the other area is there are uh, physics, there are programs at universities focused on quantum computing. There's a bunch of them, so they can go into that that direction. But even just you know, regular computer science, or regular mechanical or, and, and electrical engineering are all needs. You know, mechanical around the cooling and all that other stuff. Electrical, these are, are electrically based machines, just like a, a classical computer is. Uh, and you know, being able to code at low level is another area that's that's tremendously valuable right now. Got it. You mentioned you mentioned you know, best fit is coming. You know that, yeah, that yeah, use yeah. case. I mean. Can you give us a sense of a time frame? And people will say, oh, 10, 15, 20 years, but oh, you're I talking I think much sooner. I, I think it's sooner than that, I, I do. And I, it's hard for me to predict exactly when we'll have it. And you can already do uh, with some of the annealing machines like D-Wave some of the best fit today, right? So, so it isn't, it, uh, you know, it, it's a matter of, uh, you know, people want to use a quantum computer because they need to do something fast, they don't care how much it costs, they need to do something fast, or it's too expensive to do it on a classical computer, or you just can't do it at all on a yeah. classical computer. Today there isn't much of that last one, can't do it at all. But that, that's coming. As you get to around 52, 50, 52 qubits, it's very hard to simulate that on a classical computer. You're starting to reach the edge of what you can practically do on a classical computer. At 125 qubits, you probably are at a point where it's, you can't just simulate it anymore. But, but you're talking years, not decades. For this yeah, case. I think you're definitely talking years. I, I think, and you know, it's interesting. If you'd asked me two years ago how long it would take, I would have said decades. So that's how fast things are advancing yeah. right now. And, and the I think that, getting faster and faster. Yeah, yeah. But it, but the the ability to fabricate the understanding, you know, there there's some. You know, there's a number of architectures that are very well proven. It's just a matter of, of getting the error rates down, 
stability in place, the repeatable manufacturing in place. There's a lot of engineering problems. And engineering problems are good. We know how to do engineering problems, right? And we actually yeah. understand the physics, or at least we understand how the physics works. I won't say and claim that, you know, what is it, spooky action at a distance is what Einstein said for <laughs> entanglement, right? And that's a, a core piece of this, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so those are, those are our challenges, right? Uh, uh, and that's, that's, that, that's, that's part of the mystery of the quantum computer. So you're I having guess. fun. I am having fun. I mean, this yeah, is pretty yeah. intoxicating technical problems. It, it's it, fun. It, it is, it is a lot of fun. Of course, my, the whole portfolio that I run at AWS is just a really a fun portfolio between robotics and autonomous systems and IoT and the advanced storage stuff that we do and all the edge computing and, and, and uh, all the monitor management systems and, and all the real-time streaming. So like Kinesis Video, that's the back end for the Amazon Go stores and working with all of that. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun, it really is. Well, it's Bill, a, we need an hour to get into that, so we have to yeah. come up oh. and see you, do a special yeah, story. Definitely. We'd love to come up and dig in and get a special feature program with you yeah, at some point. Happy to do that, happy to do that. Um, Talk congrats. some robotics, some IOT, yeah, 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 autonomous systems. Yeah, you can systems. see all of it around here. Yeah. It's like we've got it, got it up and running around what here. What a portfolio. So. Congratulations. All right, thank Great you so much. Great news on the quantum. Quantum is here, quantum cloud is happening. Of course, the cube is going quantum. Yep. We got a lot of qubits here, a lot of cube highlights. <laughs> Go to siliconangle.com. We got all the data here, we're sharing it with you. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Talking quantum, want to give a shout out to Amazon Web Services and Intel for this setting up the stage for us. Thanks to our sponsors. We wouldn't be able to make this happen if it wasn't for them. Thank you very much and thanks for watching. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break.